Steve Ballmer was the first business manager hired by Microsoft. Today, he is considered as the world's richest employee as his majority of income was derived from his employment career of 34 years at Microsoft. He is the 10th richest person in the world with a new worth of $100 billion according to Bloomberg Billionaires Index. He came into limelight when in 2000, Bill Gates stepped down as CEO and named Steve Ballmer as his successor. During his tenure as CEO, he tripped the revenue from $25 billion to $70 billion. In 2014, after his retirement from Microsoft, he bought the NBA team Los Angeles Clippers for $2 billion, which was the most expensive price paid at that time to purchase an NBA team. In 2017, his record was broken when Tillman Fertitta bought the Houston Rockets for $2.2 billion. Today, the most expensive sale ever for an NBA team is the Brooklyn Nets, when in 2019, Russian oligarch Mikhail Prokhorov sold the team and its arena Barclay Center for $3.35 billion to the co-founder of Alibaba Group, Joe Tsai. Watch the full video to know how Steve Ballmer got into the $100 billion club by just working at Microsoft. What made Bill Gates choose him as the successor as CEO of Microsoft? Steve Ballmer, former CEO of Microsoft with $100 billion net worth. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinarily successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. In 1956, Steve Ballmer was born in a wealthy family in Detroit. His father immigrated from Switzerland and worked in the Ford Motor Company as a manager. From a very early age, his father wanted him to attend Harvard. Steve Ballmer was a very good student and he took distinction in his school, Detroit Country Day School. His SAT score in maths was 800. He got admission in Harvard and met Bill Gates there. He even scored higher than Bill Gates in a mathematical competition. In 1973, he graduated from Harvard and got a degree in applied mathematics and economics. After graduation, he worked at Procter & Gamble for two years and went to attend Stanford Graduate School of Business for an MBA program. In 1980, he dropped out from the MBA and joined Microsoft as its first manager. He was offered $50,000 salary and 10% stake in the company. In 1986, during Microsoft IPO, Steve owned over 8% stake in the company. In 2003, he sold his half of the stake for $955 million. Even today, Steve had kept his remaining 4% stake, which is valued at $80 billion. Steve is the largest individual shareholder of Microsoft today. His stake is even larger than Bill Gates' stake. From 1980 to 2000, he kept many roles like Head of Operating Systems Development, Head of Sales and Support, Head of Operations. In 1998, Bill Gates made him President of Microsoft where he looked day-to-day -day operations of Microsoft. In 1992, computer programmers Mark Andreessen and Eric Bina worked at Computer Research Facility National Center for Supercomputing Applications, which was a special unit of University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Both programmers got inspired to develop their own browser from David Thompson, who demonstrated Viola WWW web browser to the NCSA. In 1993, at NCSA, Mark Andreessen and Eric Bina developed Mosaic Web Browser. The browser became more popular than existing browsers like Airwise, Viola WWW, Midas WWW, and TK WWW. In 1994, the founder of computer manufacturing company Silicon Graphics, Jim Clark, contacted Mark Andreessen and presented the idea to create their own commercial web browser. They went on to start a company called Mosaic Communications Corporation, which was later renamed to Netscape Communications Corporation. Netscape was the first private company to create a web browser called Netscape Navigator, and within months, they captured the majority of the emerging World Wide Web market. In 1995, Netscape held a very successful IPO, and it was the largest in Wall Street history at that time. The initial offering was set at $28 per share, which looked like a very bold move for a company which was having no profit at all. The stock peaked at $74.75 per share on its first day before closing the day at $58.25 per share, putting the market cap of the company at around $3 billion. By the end of 1995, Netscape shares reached at around $174. 
1996, Netscape had over 80% of web browser market share. Microsoft at that time had a $75 billion market cap and dominated the operating system market. They decided to enter the web browser market. Microsoft used its market dominance and packaged Internet Explorer with Windows, thus making many of the new users to use Internet Explorer instead of Netscape Navigator. Netscape revenue came from the sales of compact disk that comes with browser. For new users, it was convenient to just buy Windows and use Internet Explorer instead of buying Navigator CD separately and installing it on Windows. Internet Explorer slowly was taking over the web browser market. Netscape responded by adding more features. Internet Explorer copied whatever new features Netscape added. In the end, both browsers became more slower and buggier. In the end, Microsoft won the browser war and Netscape, which was one of the largest companies of time, disappeared in the history. In 1998, Department of Justice and the Attorneys General of two dozen states filed antitrust charges against Microsoft. The charges mentioned that Microsoft uses its monopoly in operating system market to dominate in software industry. They gave examples of how Internet Explorer was difficult to uninstall and caused the collapse of Internet Explorer's top rival, Netscape Navigator. In 2000, the presiding judge Thomas Penfield Jackson ruled that Microsoft had unlawfully maintained its monopoly by attaching Internet Explorer with Windows. The judge's ruling said that Microsoft had violated the Sherman Antitrust Act, which is the first federal act approved in 1890 that outlawed monopolistic business practices. The judge ruled that Microsoft must be split into two companies. One company will manage and operate the operating system, while the other company will manage Microsoft's software section. Microsoft appealed the decision, and due to the judge, Thomas Jackson talked with media in an off-the-record discussion before his final decision. He was removed and Colleen Culler Codley was appointed to preside the case. In 2002, the new judge overturned the split of Microsoft and Department of Justice settled the case with Microsoft. In 1997, Apple was in serious financial trouble. The company going into bankruptcy seemed inevitable. The board decided to bring Steve Jobs back as CEO of Apple. Steve Jobs, after firing the people in the Apple board who fired Jobs earlier in 1985, he focused on raising money. He went to Bill Gates and made the deal in which Microsoft will invest $150 million in Apple stock, thus giving the lifeline to Apple. Many believe Microsoft investment in its failing rival Apple and giving lifeline to Apple was a strategic move. Microsoft was stuck in antitrust problems and bankruptcy of Apple means more monopoly of Microsoft and more antitrust problems. Both companies agreed to settle all cases, making Microsoft Office and Internet Explorer available for Macintosh users. The Microsoft investment in Apple stock helped Apple to stabilize the things and, as per agreement, Microsoft sold its Apple stock in 2003. If Microsoft would not have sold the Apple stock, it would have been worth today over $50 billion. The antitrust problems made Bill Gates take two major decisions of his life. One was saving Apple and the other was to leave the position of Microsoft CEO. In 2000, Steve Ballmer replaced Bill Gates as CEO of Microsoft. While Gates created a new position for himself, which he called Chief Software Architect. Steve Ballmer became CEO at the height of antitrust issues. His main job was to deal with Department of Justice, which he did well by settling up with DOJ. His tenure seems to be a mix of both success and failures. He converted Microsoft from a software company to a large technology corporation. Today, 35% of Microsoft's revenue comes from intelligent cloud services like Microsoft Azure, SQL Server, Windows Server, GitHub, and Enterprise Services. His move to buy Skype and decision to create gaming console Xbox are seen as big success. His first big failure was Windows Vista, which wasted at least two years of the company's resources. He missed out the mobile market, he underestimated the launch of iPhone. And unlike Google, who developed Android, did nothing much about it. When it was late, he tried to enter the mobile market by acquiring Nokia, which was a disaster and his successor, Satya Nadella, have to fix it. In 2014, Steve Ballmer resigned from Microsoft and Satya Nadella became CEO. At Microsoft, Steve Ballmer was a brilliant manager. His style of governing based on data and statistics was good for established non-tech company where one has to focus on sales instead of creativity and innovation. 
In 2014, after retirement from Microsoft, Steve Ballmer acquired NBA team Los Angeles Clippers for $2 billion. The previous owner of the team, Donald Sterling, was banned by the NBA for life due to his racist comments. After the ban, many buyers came that included Oprah Winfrey, Magic Johnson, Floyd Mayweather, and Eric Pietkowski. Ballmer paid four times more than its expected price, making it the most expensive price paid at that time to purchase an NBA team. In 2020, he bought multi-purpose indoor arena in Inglewood called Forum for $400 million in cash. In 2014, he donated around $50 million to the University of Oregon. In 2016, to counter the fake news and internet misinformation, he created website USA Facts. The website collects data from different government agencies and creates reports of tax revenues, expenditures, and outcomes. In 2018, he invested $59 million in Austin-based company called Social Solutions, which makes software for nonprofits and government agencies. In 2020, he donated over $7 million to gun control groups started by Michael Bloomberg. He founded University of Washington Medicine's Emergency Response Fund for COVID relief efforts and donated $10 million. In 2022, he donated $425 million to the University of Oregon for the development of Balmer Institute for Children's Behavioral Health. Steve Balmer's friendship and relationship with Bill Gates played an important role in becoming the most successful and richest employee in the world. He was roommates with Bill Gates at Harvard and was best man at Bill's wedding with Melinda French. Apart from his connection with Bill Gates, his management skills and his role in settlement with DOJ regarding antitrust charges enabled him to lead Microsoft for the very long time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.